are you doing another fantastic day of the week to have a fantastic show all right now i'll tell you what i don't know how your favorite celebs are doing today but what i do know is what they have been up to this past week and i'm about to fill you up with all those details my name is violet and you know, of course the captain of the hot topic central let's get the show on the road shall we yep So I'll tell you what, your favorite celebs didn't have so much time to be messy this week because they were all getting ready for the Met Gala. Now, the Met Ball is an annual fundraising gala for the benefit of the Metropolitan Museum of Art Costume Institute in New York City. So yeah, your favorite celebs did show up, they did put up a show. Some of them gave us fashion show and some of them gave us fashion shock whether you like it or not i'm gonna break down some of my faves in this year's met gala and to start us off is the one and only kendall jenner in a Givenchy dress yes that is exactly how you do a red carpet she looks absolutely stunning coming up at number two we have the black queen the beautiful girl amanda gorman in a blue vera wong dress now let me tell you something guys this girl her star has been rising ever since please don't forget she's the youngest and the only poet to ever perform at an inaugural ceremony of the president of the united states of america yeah so seeing her here looking fantastic in a blue vera wong love to see it girl you amanda you are doing absolutely fantastic and then of course we had the queen of the night now this lady this is like those people who you don't want to ever go to an event with because you know they will come and they will steal the party so effortlessly i'm talking about the queen ima in a dolce and gabbana and her reese reed now look at that outfit now this is how you wake up and dress for a red carpet now this is how you wake up and dress for the met girl now this is how you pack the whole carpet and carry it home because she won the night like she looked absolutely gorgeous like how is this a human being no seriously how is this a human being no for real let's have a conversation all right coming up at number four we have a dude a catch in michael kors look at that melanin honey and she's not even trying she's just you know she's just uh, she's just being her like so uh, uh, uh. but you're feeling it i mean look at lupita nyong'o in denim look at her hair like one thing about i like about lupita is that every single time she carries the identity of being a black queen every single where she goes so yeah love to see it now like i told you there's some people who brought in the fashion show and these are the ones who did that and then the others who decided it's fashion shock ladies and gents okay as a proki we need to talk Yes, you're dating Rihanna. Yes, you're amazing. Yes, you're fly. Yes, you are GQ, most sexy man, whatever, whatever it is that they call you. But what the hell is that blanket doing at a red carpet? No, seriously, what is... Can we use that to cuddle later with Rihanna at home and not at the red carpet? Thank you. Meg the Stallion. Like, seriously, guys, who dresses this girl? Like, I love Meg the Stallion. I think she's a fantastic amazing singer rapper music writer her body is her thighs are <clears throat> her, oh but what is going on in this outfit why those shoes like her feet look exhausted in that those like those shoes cannot wait to be out of this event why would you give her such a dress what is happening with the handbag yo she needs to fire her whole stylist department because yo somebody is sleeping on their job no, for real. And then now we have um, Rebecca Hall. Okay, did they tell you you was going for the Met Gala? No, seriously, did they tell you? Because what is happening with that dress? No, seriously, what is happening in that looks like my grandmother's dress that she would never wear anyway. Why are you wearing such on a red carpet? Anyway, yeah. So, anyway, moving on swiftly. Elsa Majimbo, our very own, managed to get herself an invite to the Met Gala. So, yeah, I keep telling you guys all the time, this girl is not on our level. Like, look at her at the Met Gala. Yeah, so that's pretty much what was happening. So, congratulations to everyone who stepped out and looked absolutely great. The rest of you guys, let us see what you're going to do in 2022. Cool? Yeah. On to story number two, and this one I want to talk to all the women. Women, we need to talk. No, seriously, we need to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation because you know what? We cannot continue like this. No, we cannot keep doing this. We cannot keep being 
a jealous gender. Now, we all know Rotimi and Vanessa Day have been serving such amazing couple goals on the internet, right? Like, they look fantastic and they are expecting baby number one together. Makes their relationship even more cute, right? So everyone has been serenading them with love on social media, especially after they made the announcement that they're expecting a baby. But turns out, there's one person in particular, one person, who doesn't want to join the happy party? I'm talking about Kim Opera, who is a travel blogger and also a media personality and also is Rotini's ex. Now, she made a video where she was addressing Vanessa Day and telling her that she should not get comfortable because she, Kim Opera now, was also Rotini's everything at some point in life. So yeah, she should not get comfortable because she can also get dumped too. Don't get too comfortable, sweetheart. I was as everything wants to. No. You can't do that. Sis, there's like 8 billion people in the world. Go get you another man. Yamani, we cannot be such a... How... How... How can... Nyotando gili mbapa jamani ulikuna sama nini? Oh, kuna tu, na viyatu, tuniani. Oh, kuna... Oh, ukiwa na chocha wa uma. Ndani kwanda ni ah mwana mke jamani mbona unaumwa ah like how do you wake up as an ex and start warning the current girlfriend to your ex that don't get comfortable you will be dumped too ah jamani tumbi mbona nyota ndogo tena oh kuna watu eh na viatu zuni wana wake jamani ah mzit mm kayanza on twitter hi how are you doing now let me tell you something guys Try as much as possible not to ever get yourself in the wrong side of Kenyans on Twitter because those people have no chills, have no mercy, have no sympathy, have no compassion. They'll check you, check your family, check your ancestors and have no apologies to make. Now, the latest victim of the wrath of Kenyans on Twitter has to be Sleepy David. Now, we all know Sleepy David has a YouTube channel where they do pranks on celebrities and also different other people. And their latest prank had to be the one where they pranked Omosh to sell his house at 15 million with a lady who posed as a potential ready buyer. Now, of course, Omosh was willing to sell the house, but this did not go well with people, especially all the Kenyans on Twitter, because they felt they took advantage of Omosh's situation, especially dealing with the fact that somehow he has this relationship with alcohol and it's almost not fair to put him up in such a situation in a vulnerable state so yeah twitter was going crazy people almost threatened to unsubscribe to his channel and uh i see where they're coming from and i think it's important for people to realize yes we are in the business of creating content yes we are in the business of creating tv but let us not take advantage of people's situations for numbers and clout and subscription. Cool? Yeah. But try as much as possible not to get yourself in the wrong hands of people on Twitter. Like, those people don't give a mm about it. If you know, you know. We don't give a mm about it. <laughs> By the way, guys, iPhone 13 is out. So the ballers, this is your opportunity for you to go and upgrade to iPhone 13. And then the rest of us me included, can walk into a store and ask for iPhone 8 16 GB. Yes, you shall not pressure us. We are moving with our own pace. We are moving with our own speed. We are moving with our own financial flex. So all the people who are now looking for iPhone 8, raise your hands. Don't feel bad about it, but yo, you guys have money. You're already buying iPhone 13, 200,000. Hadi, are we in the same pandemic? What to iPhone 8? 16 GB, here we are. <laughs> so we shall be buying iPhone 13 when they're in iPhone 20. Yeah, we are still communicating, aren't we? Thank you. There you go, guys. That is pretty much what some of your favorite celebs have been up to. But right about now, like we always do, it's time for story, 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 yeah. Like we always do. And today, I want to tell you why I think primary school life for me was the ghetto. Like the absolute ghetto. First things, I don't even understand why my parents took me to that school. But yeah, my parents took me to boarding school when I was in class 5. That was in 2005. Yes, and they took me in a school in Ukambani, deep within in uh, the area called inside, like completely inside Ukambani, all right? And uh, it was a place called Biuni. The school is called St. Joseph, but it's in Biuni. So when you pass Kaban, you know, 
and then you go deep inside you find yourself at a place called Biuni. then there's this primary school that is run by catholic missionaries and yeah there is where i was dumped in 2005. let me tell you some of the things that happened in that school that when i sit back right now i'm like you know what we need to sue these people no seriously we have to we could actually win a lawsuit against this people because they almost killed us no for real they did number one they used to put kerosene in our dinner no seriously they did so we used to have githeri monday to sunday no seriously monday to monday not even monday to sunday monday to monday we used to have githeri for dinner and so they would we used to take our plates to the dh boys used to sit on one side and girls used to sit on one side and then we turn our plates upside down and then when it's time for dinner they'll come turn them put the on all the plates and then we'd come and eat so we used to make a line before we all enter the dh right i mean order so when you walk inside the first smell that hits you before you can smell the githeri or whatever is kerosene yeah no seriously it was pure kerosene and of course they would act like they haven't done this thing but yes they used to put kerosene in our food the reason for doing that apparently apparently is they were trying to control what do we call it nyege what is nyege in english i don't know so yeah they used to control nyege because we're in a mixed boarding school and then it's also we are hitting adolescents so we have boobs here and there hips are coming boys are feeling something dingly dingly going on down there so yeah apparently kerosene kerosene was meant to control our hormones and then you can imagine we used to carry blue band margarine butter and all those things so here you are with blue band we also used to make mkorogo and then you have githeri which has kerosene and you mix that thing and eat it yo how did we not die no seriously yeah that's number one number two there used to be a tree in school you know even now i sit back and think you know what we cannot even die from corona we, ha we have to fight this pandemic we, we, we seriously have to fight it we have to we will survive it because yo the ghetto that we went through so there used to be a tree in school that used to produce a fruit that is eaten by birds and this fruit is called mato okay cambas in the house was good so this thing had some mucus thing inside yeah and you had to go under the tree and we used to look for it and then you eat it it has like some <sighs> slimy mucus thing like so slimy and it used to be eaten by birds but find us at the 15 minutes break under the tree looking for mato no seriously and then for breakfast we used to have porridge every single day white porridge and then there are people who are big fans of top layer so you would come put top layer and eat but then again also we used to carry junk so you had juice you had you know milo whatever it is that you want to carry so we used to put all these things inside your porridge to make it flavorable so if you have soda you put soda if you have fisto you put fisto if you have cakes you mix with cakes if you have biscuits you put it no seriously in porridge so by the time you're done and you're ready to have your porridge it's legit the color of some sulfuric acid purple pink green yeah so yeah and we survived and we did not die but let me tell you one of the fun things about primary school was love letters so here's the thing so i mean i think love letters were cool we don't do that anymore because everyone has a phone and everyone is texting and everyone is sliding in the dms but hell yes I miss when love letters was a thing and that was when we were in school and now these were the rules of actually having a love letter no seriously agree with me tell me if I'm lying number one you had to have a fancy writing part you see that part that has flowers on the side so the bougie people who used to have them used to sell them at 40 bob in school am I lying no so yes so there used to be this letter writing part that was the one that you're supposed to send a love letter in great cool number two in rules of writing a love letter you had to have a fantastic handwriting you know those people whose h is the g the k the l you know the people whose you know their letters are well defined the b is hits the upper line correct the b is lying on the yeah not those funny handwriting so you had to get someone the fantastic handwriting to do your love letter for you great rule number three 
you had to get someone who knows how to do calligraphy so that they can calligraph the name of the person you're sending the letter to on the envelope. Am I lying? No, I'm not lying. So if you're sending it to Violetta, you cannot write Violetta. Eh? It had, the V had to have some thunder shading. Eh? The dot had to look like yo. So if you're a talented artist, there was free business for you in school because you could do calligraphy on an envelope and get some money. Rule number four, you had to spray the letter. No, seriously. And then we had cheap perfumes. You know those ones that are sold in supermarkets that are, you know, some really cheap perfumes. I don't know if they're perfumes, roll-on, whatever it is that they are. You had to spray your love letter. And number five, which is the last and the most important part of a love letter. Let me see if you guys know. Tell me. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The most important part of a love letter was the last part, which was the dead dedication. The music part. Number one song that you had to send every single time you send a love letter was Lonely by Akon. Am I lying? I call it love by Leon and Richie. So you'd write a whole letter, write a whole lot of nonsense. I cannot sleep without you. I'm thinking about you. Eh, how are you doing in school? I miss you. Eh, I cannot wait for the holidays. All that bullshit. And then down there, dead. And then it should be D E D X. And then you put those funny songs. The one that is top mind, of course, is Lonely by Akon because for some reason we're all lonely at school, you know, you're missing the love of your life. Love of your life? Since when? Yeah, so those were the rules of having a love letter. So, <laughs> let me tell you, one time I got a love letter that nearly shocked my life. And ever since that day, I'm actually not a big fan of love letters. So, when I was in class 8, first of all, in my school, we all used to shave our hair. Like, we never had hair at all so we used to have we used to shave i'm even thinking any guy that liked me at that time must have been my true love because they loved me at my rawest form you guys are loving me right now with 32 inches of horse hair mm -mm, you're getting a refined me i need to go back to those guys who used to say you're the most beautiful girl when i had no hair no seriously it was in kamba we call him guno like it was like here yeah. no makeup no piercings no, seriously, I'll put a photo of myself. No, seriously. So I'm thinking, those guys who actually told me they love me then, I think I need to go back to them. You who are liking me now with 32 inches of horse hair, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. So, when I was in primary school, in class 8, there were two guys. Two guys! One was called Emmanuel Kilonzo. Who is this guy? I wish I could see him. And then the other one was called Israel Kinyolo. Now, they liked me. You know, out of the pool, I mean, everyone had people they like, right? So these are the two that were on my case hard. You know, the rest, they didn't tell me, so I don't know if they were or not. But these two, ha! I was giving them a bit of sleepless nights. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. So I say, Israel was the kind of guy that comes from an extremely rich family. Like, you know those people? Like, now that I think about it, these guys were the real definition of Fuomoka. Not for real. Like, even on visiting days, because you used to have one visiting per term. His folks used to... Like, everyone in the family had a car. The mom has a car, the dad has a car, the sisters has a car, the aunties are coming with a separate car. And then there's another car that will come with coolants and food and so heaters so that they eat the food when it's still hot. And then there's ice cubes in another one so that they drink. So, and then there's us ordinary normal human beings with one car a normal toyota corolla everyone is inside from your mom to your dad to your grandmother to your auntie to all your siblings to the hot pots whether the food will be cold or hot it don't matter because you don't even have a choice okay now israel used to yo i didn't even the snacks he's brought for pringles you know pringles pringles are those like really fancy crisps in like a box that is like hey the rest of us Amigos, nice biscuits, you know. <laughs> no, Israel was like, Israel was living the life. And then there's Emmanuel. Emmanuel, my other boy that liked me. And then, so, you know, it used to be a tug of war. It used to be a tug, a tug of war. And then, Emmanuel kind of resembled, do you guys remember Matonya? Yeah, that guy. Yes, we grew up with such amazing music back in the day. So Emmanuel kind of looks like Matonya. So guys used to call him Matonya. You know, you remember that guy who used to sing bongo? You remember that guy? So we used to call him Mato Matonya. And then now it happened. 
happened in 2008 we're in class 8 the same year that is when matonya released this song called violetti yeah now where i'm going with this story my name is violetta right kind of almost it feels like it's the english version of violetti right so it became like matonya because emmanuel is matonya right he's like this is my dedication to you by Letty, you know, so it became like he's dedicating this song to me. He used to write me the lyrics of that song, and that was to make Israel feel bad. No, Israel is so bougie, he doesn't even know who Matonya is. If you look at his playlist, he's only listening to Linkin Park, Avril Lavigne, Kelly Clarkson, Daughtry. Yo, friends, he doesn't even know how yo, he doesn't even know who Matonya is. So he was really floating and my Emmanuel, my aka Matonya, was dedicated to constantly write me letters and send me that song. Violetti, Violetti, Violetti. Yeah, you know? So yeah, crazy, right? Then, those are the kind of letters I used to get from Emmanuel all the time. So he used to call me Violetti and send me amazing love letters. Dedication, Violetti, Matonya. Yeah, yeah, so it was cute and fancy. And then um, Israel... Okay, Israel had a bad handwriting first, so he didn't qualify to write love letters. But, I mean, he had the most amazing snacks, so he could give me a snack bar and, huh, I'm head over heels. Yeah, he didn't have to do much. I told you, Israel was living the life. So, the most shocking love letter that I got, a bit later on, when there's this still tug of war, does Violetta belong to Israel? Does she belong to Matonya? I want, I want, I'm feeling Israel, but then Matonya is coming with the vibes and the songs and the, you know, and then Israel is coming with the Pringles, I'm so confused, and the bubble, dairy milk, and all, and then Matonya is coming with another dedication, so I was so confused, I was so confused, is it Israel, is it Matonya, guys, help me, I'm, damsel is in distress, I'm stressed, guys, I'm stressed, who am I gonna be with? Yeah! So in the process of making this decision, I'm trying to find a boyfriend, guys. I'm in class 8. I need a boyfriend. You know that is when your body is beginning to take some sort of shape. Yeah! I need a boyfriend. I'm just not so sure who. Yeah! So, one morning, it was 5 a.m. I was actually one of the most brilliant girls in school. Like, I really loved to study. I don't know what happened to me. But yeah, when I was in primary school, I was like really one of those who are always around books that want to study. So this morning, I'm ready for morning preps. I used to be among the first people to get to class. So, this fateful morning, I get to class. I was in 8A, just to be at the corner, right? So I go to 8A, I'm ready, psyched. I'm ready to do my revision. Monocotyledon, dicotyledon. What, what was those other things? Grows above, grows below. Oh, that takes oxygen during the day. Who was taking carbon dioxide during the night? One of those plants. Hey, if you put up, hey, yo, what? Oh, you remember those things? Plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells. Oh, so, yeah, yo, yeah. So, <laughs> I wake up very early in the morning ready to do my studies. I'm trying to figure out which plant is taking carbon dioxide. Which one is releasing oxygen? Why should I not sleep with a plant in the house? Oh, what? Yo, yes, I was ready, focused to put my parents' school fees into use. I got to class, open my book, the book that I was going to read. I just left everything on the table. Yo, I find a letter to Violetta Angela. I'm like, oh boy, who is this? This early morning just wants to make me feel mushy and all up in my field. So I start feeling mushy inside. I open my letter. First thing, disclaimer number one, it was not in the usual pad that we use when you're writing letters. It was in a normal full scalp. That was the beginning of trouble. Remember, I told you the rules of writing a letter when we're in school. Number one, you have to get a writing pad. Those pads with flowers. Number two, you have to have a fantastic handwriting. Number three, you gotta get someone to do calligraph for you to write my name. Number four, you gotta spray that shit. Number five, put some deads right down there. Cool. So yeah, disclaimer number one, this is a freaking full scalp. So I was like, no, mm -mm. there's some trouble. There's a problem. There is a problem. Look at the overview of the letter. Great handwriting. At least one thing is correct. I start reading my love letter. Hi, Violetta. Oh, I hope this 
is finding you well i just want to say morning to you but i think it was there was a lot of things but it was a nasty letter and i remember the worst part of this letter was a part that said because that was when we we're growing our breasts are beginning to develop i don't know why they stopped midway but yeah they were beginning to develop at the time so i'm reading the letter and then say your mammary glands first yeah your mammary glands are so big like a cow's i can't wait to suck on them huh? no seriously that was part of the letter and then a lot of abusive things about my body blah 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 but the striking part was the fact that my mammary glands were so big like the size of a cow and then if you look who it's from from israel no it can't be from israel the handwriting was so perfect it looks like Emmanuel's handwriting. I know Emmanuel's handwriting. Everybody knows Emmanuel's handwriting. And everybody knows Israel doesn't have a good handwriting. So I was so sure this is not from Israel. So Israel walks to class. I'm crying. Like seriously, I'm causing a scene. I've always been dramatic from day one. So I'm crying. I'm causing a scene. I'm asking Israel, why would you do this to me? You know? And then Israel with his left hand over there. Why would I do this to you? You know Israel is bougie. I told you his, his playlist is Daughtry Linking Pack. April Lavin, you know, and the rest of us are Matonya, Alikiba, Caesars, Chicken Lomanzi, and you remember those funny songs? Yeah. So Israel is so bougie. I'm asking, why would you do this to me? I'm like, why would I do this to you? This is not me who wrote you this letter. Blah blah blah. Does this does this even look like my handwriting? We left the class yesterday to, together. Why would I ca I believed him. I believed him. And he gave me a snack bar. So I believed him. And when morning hit, because that was morning preps and it was too early, when it was finally 8 a.m., time for preps, I was a snitch, a little bit of a snitch. I took my letter to the headmistress. Yeah! And all the boys were punished severely until they report the person who wrote the letter. But you know, boys, snitches get stitches. Bros over hoes, hoes, hoes. They couldn't say who wrote the letter. So they were beaten. All of them. And then in primary school, they used to wear shorts and shorts and shorts and then the main short. So that when you're beaten, it doesn't hit. It used to be called kuvata. So yeah, they had to confirm if they have that. They were all beaten severely for writing me a love letter. And yeah, that's why I think primary school was the ghetto. And up until now, I don't know who wrote me that abusive love letter. And I think I'm scared of love letters up until now. But yeah, primary school was the ghetto. For real. They used to put kerosene in our foot. I think I need to go back and sue those people. Yeah, because those niggas, uh, I'm not so sure if they really were controlled. Because yeah. People still used to kiss, yeah, during night preps, and yeah, so I think maybe they should have added, you know, other things. But yeah, that's my story. I really don't like love letters. I feel like my first love letter, which was in primary school, traumatized me because it was abusive. Nah, for real. My mammary glands were so big, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I really don't know what happened because, you know, I think the process of growth stopped somewhere in the middle. But yeah. That was my primary school for you. And I'm not going to do that to my child. I'm going to take my child to Brook House and these fancy schools. You know, my parents took me to Mbuni. Why? I was only... Oh, God. Yeah, see you later in the week, guys, with more amazing stories. Ciao.